What's up guys, today we're going to be learning how to build on an Android device. So you're going to have your Unity game running on a mobile device just like here. And uh, it's something I had quite a struggle with when I first started making mobile games. It's something that I've had to repeat over and over again because you need some kind of setup on your computer. And today we're going to be showing you exactly what step you have to go through to have that setup and then be able to build your mobile games to your phone. Quit. You are going to need, of course, your device. I'm using a Google Pixel right here and also the cord so you can plug it in the computer as well. Um, and that's pretty much all you need. The rest is all softwares. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the engine and look at how we're going to be building this towards an Android device. So this is the game right here. And now if I just stop it real quick, I'm going to go under build settings and make sure we have Android selected Android or iOS, depending on which one you're trying to build to. In my case, since I'm building on Android, I will choose Android. Now, the first thing you need to actually build towards that is uh, some Unity plugins. So Unity has all those plugins if you're trying to build towards WebGL, iOS, tvOS, or all that kind of stuff. They all have a different kind of plugin. By default, you get the PC, Mac, and Linux standalone uh, plugin. But now, if you want to build towards Android or iOS, you need to have additional uh, data on top of your Unity. So right here, since I'm building for an Android device, I'm going to go ahead and click on Open Download Page. Now this is going to bring you to, well, not really any link, but this is going to start a download as you can tell. So right here, it says you want to download this. I say yes, I already downloaded it, so I'll just open it up in my computer. So the specific one is a 100 meg download. Once you have it, double click on it and just simply install. There is nothing special in the installation here. You have the typical license agreement. Once you have that, click on next. And that is really all there is to this installation process. There isn't really anything else that you need to know here. So just make sure you download all of that. Now, once this installation is complete, all you have to do is hit finish and also make sure you restart Unity. So in my case, let me just close that and we're going to boot it up again. So that was the very first step that you had to do. You needed to download the Unity plugin to actually build towards mobile phone. So if you head over to, the, to your build settings now, you're going to see that Android is actually lit up and you can actually use it. So I'm going to hit build and run right here. Just build this anywhere you want. So in my case, I'll just call this build. And you're going to run into your second problem. Now, during the build, you're going to run into another problem. They will ask you to select your Android SDK folder. And this is something you're not going to have if you've never done any Android development. Um, if you do have Android Studio installed somewhere, you do have this Android SDK installed as well. So you're just going to be looking for it. In our case right now, we're starting from clean. We're starting from a fresh Windows installation. And we do not have the Android SDK. What we're going to do is head over to Google and type in Android SDK just like this. Now, just pick the first link up here. And what we're going to do is we're not going to download Android Studio because that's a too big download. And we don't really want to have their IDE. What we really want here is the simple Android SDK and nothing else. So what you're going to do on this page, make sure you scroll down all the way and now get just the common line tools. In this case, I'm on, on uh, Windows, so I'll just click on this one. I agree. And download the tools. That is a 300 meg download. In my case, this actually takes a while. So I've already downloaded the thing before. And here it is. You can have a folder called tools and then depending which version you're at, uh, with the rest of that. So what you need to do at this point is just make sure you extract this, extract this anywhere. And we're just going to wait until this is completed. Once it is fully extracted, what I like to do right here is to call this one Android and we're going to cut it and put it somewhere a little bit more uh, relevant. So in this case, I'll go under program file and just paste it in here. This is going to be your Android SDK folder. So Inside of it, there is only something called tools for now, but eventually there's going to be more. All right, so what we need to do at this point, go back in Unity. And let's actually do a build and run again, just to test it out. And it's going to ask you, select your Android um, SDK root folder, which is right here in our case. All right, so Unity managed to find the Android SDK, but the Android SDK is not updated properly at this point. So we're going to hit cancel and we're going to go update it manually. The way we do this is we head over to our Android SDK folder. Under Tools, there is going to be something called Android right here, which is just a uh, Windows batch file. Make sure you right click on it and run it as admin. This is really important, else it's not going to work. After that, you're going to get a common prompt just like this. And then the Android SDK is going to pop up. 
what you need right here to check. There's a few things you need to check. In the tools section, you want to be checking Android SDK tools, platform tools, and also build tools. Now, if you scroll down, you will also want to have a full version of Android. So in this case, I'll be using 7.1.1. .1. So just check this. And then that is pretty much all we need. In my case, since I am using a Google phone, so I'm using the Google Pixel, um, I will have to check this to have my Google USB driver. I also recommend getting those if you don't really know what kind of phone you have. Then once it is done, once you have all of these checked in, make sure you click on install all the package that you selected. You'll have to accept the license and then finally just wait until all of this is completed. So these download and these installation, they take quite a while, especially for me here in the Philippines, my connection is not so good. So I will pause the video and come back later. If you do have errors like the one you see right here, this is not actually going to stop us from installing um, the package. But if you have some error that, uh, that says something like we're not able to access a certain folder, then make sure you're running the Android SDK Manager as the administrator of the computer. So I will wait until those are complete and I will come back to you soon. And we are back. So the installation was successful, even though we have um, this one problem right here, the ADB server failed. It was still successful. We can click on OK, then close this, and then close this again, and try to go for another build. So let's go ahead and just open this up, build settings, build for Android, build and run. And let's try it one more time. Now the third problem we should actually run into here is uh, it's not going to happen on my side because I did already install the GDK but you need to have the uh, Java development kit in order for this to work. Now, if I just pull this up for a second, I have it somewhere under my download. So this is the GDK. I've got it off the Java website. So let's do the exact same thing. Let's go on Google, type in GDK, and it's always the first link. Then on this website here, on the Oracle website, we are trying to download the GDK. So this thing right here, click on download and then find the one that is appropriate for your OS. In my case, I'm running Windows 64. Make sure you accept the terms and license. Then you click here. You get your download and it is just like the, um, this one is 200 meg and all you have to do is as soon as you get it, instead of your download folder, you double click on it and you simply install. So there is nothing complicated in that installation. You just click next, next, next until it is done. And then once you have your GDK, uh, installed as well, you are going to get this kind of messages. Um, there is a few things to do if you get this kind of message. First, make sure that your device is plugged in. So right here it says you have to make sure that USB debugging has been enabled. Let's go ahead and do that on our device. You should actually see my device right here on the screen. And I'm going to go under settings. So depending on which Android version you're using, mine is uh, the newest one. So that's what I need to do. I'm currently connected on this Wi-Fi. Let's go down to actually the about phone section at the very end here. Now what you need to do is scroll down at the very bottom where you see build number right here and you tap on it until it says that you are now a developer. In my case, I've already done it so it says no need, you already are a developer. Once you have unlocked this, you can go back one menu and you can find now that you have the developer option at the bottom here. Click on it and then make sure that USB debugging has been enabled, so down here you're going to allow USB debugging. And then once this is completed, you can go back to the home screen. Make sure you hit a retry right here. And at this point, you should either get a message on your phone that says you want to allow this computer to access it. In that case, you say yes, or you should get another error just like I have right now. So if your device is plugged in and you do have USB debugging enabled, um, this is what you have to go through to actually figure out what the problem is. There may be two problems. First, your phone is not being detected by your computer, which is my case right now, or you don't have the actual um, driver for your phone. Now, what I recommend you do first is actually look if your phone is being detected by your computer. And there is, um, there is like a really simple way to do it. If you have a look over here on my phone, I will pull down my notification. Here they are. Right now, this is being detected by my computer because we have these two options right here. So it says USB charging for device. So it knows that is, it is actually being um, connected to the device. And we can also change this for, say, uh, you know, use device as MIDI. So this, is, this means that it is being detected by the computer. So in my case, if I just hit retry right now, we should be able to have a build on our computer. Oh, here it is. So it asks me, do I want to allow this computer to actually access my device? I say yes. So simply click OK. 
and I am going to get a build on my device. Now, if uh, you hit retry and this did not work for you, it means that you have to head over to Google and have a uh, just make a research about your phone. So if you're running, say, a, a Samsung 7, then type in Samsung 7 USB driver. Then you get those drivers, you download them, you follow their instruction, and this will now work. So once you got everything figured out, you just do a build and run, and you just wait a bit, you should have your build on your device. And now finally, the last error you're going to run into. You have not set a bundle identifier. This one is so easy to fix. Let's click on OK, head over to Player Settings, and under Publishing Settings over here on the Inspector, you are actually not Publishing Settings, sorry, Other Settings, you are going to set a bundle identifier for your game. This usually goes like this, so come, then the name of your company, and finally the name of your game. So this is the phone build test. Once this is done, you can go ahead and just do a control B to start the building process again. And now right here, it's asking me for my GDK folder, which I thought I had installed, but I didn't. So let me just go quickly to my download and install it. Like we said, we did a little bit earlier ago. So simply hit next, 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 and we should actually be good after that. And here we go, it was successfully installed and let me just head over there uh, at the default install path which is under program file and then Java and GDK. Select the folder and we should now have a proper build on our device. As you can tell it's done uh, compiling everything, now it's going to look for a device and finally push on it. And let's pull the phone, as you can tell it's copying the package over to the Pixel device and it's just booting automatically on my device here. So if we just have a look at this, let's hope it's recording, it is. As you can tell, I do have my game right here. I do have some problems with the shaders, but as you can tell, it is running on my device quite smoothly, actually.